Hello, this is Gaurav from School of DevOps and I welcome you to our new series that is DevOps Tool of the Week or simply called DTAO. With this series, we bring to you some of the most fascinating, interesting, popular or unpopular but definitely useful set of tools. And here's the format that we're going to follow for the series. So we'll begin with the purpose of the tool. Why would you need that tool? Why should you care about it? And then we'll talk about what is it all about? What is this tool? And what are the key features of that followed by a brief demo? Now that is my favorite part. I'm quite excited to bring this series to you and I hope you'd find this interesting as well. And imagine this, if you subscribe to this series now, in one year's time from now, you would have known at least 52 new interesting tools. Not bad, isn't it? And we would do that one week at a time. So let's get started with our first tool. So the DevOps tool of the week that we bring to you this time is called as Kubernetes Operational View. This tool allows you to get an operational view of your cluster, how it looks like, uh, get a visualization around it, as well as see things change in an animated way when you make changes that could be deployments and so on. Now visual tools are very effective way of reinforcing the things that you are while you are learning. And that's especially true for a Kubernetes-like environment where you have a bunch of nodes on top of that, you're going to deploy uh, many different pods and you want to see actually what is happening when you make those changes. Now most of the time, you're going to make changes using the command line utilities, you run some commands, you run kubectl or you do the dashboard, uh, apply the YAML files. Uh, but it's very difficult to see the effect of your action as it happens. And that's where this tool becomes a very useful you know, um, visual aid for you. Now let's have a look at the source code for Kube, op Kube Operational View. Now there is no official site for this, so you have to rely on the GitHub page. You could obviously uh, go to that original repository and use that code. We have made some changes which made it work and exposed it on a node port service, a specific service. So I would highly recommend you, if you are setting this up, use this particular repository, which we're gonna send you a link in the description below. Now this is how it looks like, and that's quite interesting. We're gonna see how uh, it would, you know, it would uh, the visual it would visualize things once we set it up. And these are the features. It's quite new project. It's in an early stage, but as it says, it is already useful. It's quite useful to understand how things work. And what does it show right now? Are the status, the you know, the resource utilization, and it renders the pods and animates it as well. And if you want to set this up, you just have to d d download this and run one command going to this directory that is kubectl apply minus f deploy. And provided that you already have your Kubernetes cluster up. Now let's switch and uh, look at some of the features. So here we have a it's a Kubernetes operations overview setup already, and on the that's what you see on the right hand side. On the left hand side, you see the kubectl um, you know uh, console from where you can make changes. And what you see on the right hand side are, are two nodes. And if you click on or hover over those nodes, you also see the CPU and memory information about the pods. You also see the capacity of pods. And what you see on the bottom are the pods created by the Kubernetes itself. That's from the Kub Kubernetes namespace, the you know the control plane as we call it. And on top, we have a couple of nodes, which are the normal ports. I mean, in general, even if you deploy one, it's basically, it deploys the uh, uh, DNS as an additional service, which is the normal port. Now I'm going to deploy the application itself, which will have multiple components, which will have its own deployments. And you will start noticing the ports being added on the right hand side. And that animates and that looks pretty cool. So now we have additional pods created and right now it is spreading the load across these two nodes equally almost equally and that sort of uh, visualizes how the kubernetes would schedule the how it would work uh, you also see the cpu and memory bars changing now let's it's time to add one more node and see what happens i'm using google contain google cloud rather for setting up these uh, nodes so i'm going to add one more node and then come back here and when i when the node gets added you should see it on that visualizer as well 
there we go so we have one more node added and the kubernetes control plane parts there mainly the kube proxy as well as um, uh, maybe one of the other additional services there and now let's scale the deployment and see what happens now on the left hand side i see all these deployment deployments there for that application and i'm going to scale one of that deployment to demonstrate you know uh, the new parts being added and when the new parts get added the scheduler will start bin packing those so it will just start distributing initially to all the nodes and you see the new parts created on the new node now this sort of visualizes how the scheduling works so that's quite useful to understand uh, when you make changes to your Kubernetes cluster and that's your Kubernetes operational overview and if I delete a node Kubernetes offers you fault tolerance so it took those parts and put it on the other nodes that's pretty cool and that's a quick demo of kubops view if you like this content do like share and subscribe you may also find links to our free courses in the description below along with some special offers for our premium courses you can also visit us at schoolofdevops.com